Hello everyone, it's Farkad here. And in this episode of Problems of the Forest, I'm gonna cover the map being too big. Now I'm gonna cover the problem and then I'll cover the solution afterwards. Now the footage for this I'm gonna have is me driving around the island with a golf cart. A couple of times I couldn't get past, so I just wanted another one. It took 40 minutes to get around. It wasn't fun. Obviously that's a long way around. You can drive on the roads on the map. You don't have to go around the outside. I actually think this is one of the biggest problems with Sons of the Forest. It's that big, it makes the game feel empty. And I've seen a lot of complaints with reviews and such saying that the game feels empty. And when the map is as big as it is, it is no wonder why people feel that way. It is stupidly big. I think it is on par with Green Hell's Spirits of the Amazonia. That map is stupidly big as well and unnecessarily so. Come to think of it, that was the reason why I stopped playing that game. I had a cool RPG concept, but the map was just too big. That's going off topic. Now, the reason why it's so big is I've got no idea. I never asked when I was in Vancouver. I didn't realize it was going to be that big. Perhaps I need to do a Q&A. Now, I know that the golf cart, Night V, and the glider have been added to the game, but I feel they are not the best solution. For example, the glider, you often take it there, then you have to bring it back. And if you ever actually go on the Night V or the golf cart and ride or drive from one end of the map to the other, it takes a long time. And it's actually not that enjoyable. For the first five minutes, it's a joy ride, and yeah, it's all right, but it's pretty tedious. Now, I think a possible problem with the map being so big and in the way it is, is that there's a lack of variety. There really isn't any biomes, with the exception of possibly the beach, if you could count that as a biome, which I wouldn't really. You've got the mountain in the middle, which is the stupidest part of the map. And then you've got the golf course. It's not like Seven Days to Die or Minecraft where you've got a snow biome, desert biome, probably other ones that I'm not thinking of at the moment. The game doesn't need that, but it doesn't explain why they made the map so damn big. I don't know what's worst about the map. The fact that it's so big or that there's a stupid immovable mountain right in the middle that serves no purposes, no resources. Are they getting up? There's a pain in the penis. It is annoying. I said I wouldn't whinge, but man, I hate when I don't understand something. I have a problem with the obsession with understanding. So while making this video and going through the points I've made and such, I started thinking about whether this video is actually about one of two things. Is the map too big or is the world too empty? And they can mean two different things. Or the world is too empty or is the game too empty? And I think in this video, I'm actually trying to address both things without being clear about what actually is going on. Because in my opinion, the map is too big and the world does feel too empty and the game does feel too empty as well. Because there isn't enough to do in the game. I don't know if it's an overstep of player freedom. They don't want to put things in the game that the player feels forced to do or they maybe don't want to overcomplicate it. If you ask my opinion, a lot of survival craft games are becoming way too complicated. You need so many different resources to make anything work and then you got to find out where they are and go to those areas, etc. Maybe that is what they're trying to avoid. And I wouldn't blame them, though it does add a level of complexity to those games that is actually quite good in some cases. And what it does in a way is it kind of encourages or pretty much forces a player to go explore content that the developers have created for them to get the resources that they need to progress in the game. For example, you must go to the desert in seven days to die to get oil. You must go to the snow biome to get snow. Probably not the best example. Maybe Minecraft has a better example, but I've actually never played Minecraft. Anyway, this turned into way longer than I was expecting for this point I'm trying to make. I do believe it makes sense. But either way, the map is just too big or it needs to be filled out more. There needs to be more to do in the game is basically what I'm getting to. Though, I'm going to move on to the solutions. Now, the first one is the most unlikely solution that we probably won't see. And I don't think it's a good idea, but that is to just cull about 75% of the map. I'm going to draw a square on the map here of where I think would be enough. But that's getting into the forest size. And the forest was a good size, I think. I actually felt that the forest wasn't filled out that much. And it's strange that they go four times the size of the forest and fill even less of it out. Now, I just want to say, don't get me wrong, it's beautifully designed. I'm not sure who actually designed the map at end night, but landscape, all that sort of stuff, it does look very nice. I don't think we're going to see a cull, and I don't think it's fair because a lot of players would lose their base. Next one is what Just Rob came up with, but he doesn't play the game anymore. He's a YouTuber. He came up with an idea of the volcano erupting and <laughs> clearing most of the map or just changing it. That could work, but I think it comes with the same problem that it's just not going to work. I think it's going to destroy too many people's bases. The next solution is to add more POIs. 
And obviously that is going to take a long time. So maybe they need to hire more people to do it. I don't know how hard it is to use the map editor and that stuff in Unity. I think this is just something that's going to be done over time, but it's going to take them a long time to actually make the world feel less empty because it really does feel empty. Have I mentioned that yet? Another possible solution is to add random events or random encounters. And that could just be things like you save an accountable and maybe they can reward you. I don't know why all the cannibals are hostile towards you. It seems to be unnecessary. I've actually thought about the AI between this game and the forest. And sometimes I actually feel like the AI is worse in this game, unless they've got something major planned. This is one solution I did have, but I don't know how viable it actually is. I always found it strange why all these bunkers are not connected. Why would they separate them so much? And the solution I came up with is an underground rail system. And possibly you could fix it up and improve it or something like that. Another way that might be good for dealing with this problem is to actually turn the game into more of an RPG, a role playing game. Spirits of the Amazonia did this in Green Hell, and I think they did it pretty well. It was pretty grindy though. It just gave the player extra stuff to do while they did the game. Like why aren't there peaceful tribes on the island? They could add a third faction. You've got the mutants versus the cannibals and there could be just peace that just wanna live in peace. I just don't believe it. it's not realistic that everything on this island wants to kill you. Even in the wild, it's not that way. You've got carnivore creatures and you've got herbivore creatures. Herbivore creatures don't really wanna kill you unless it's mating season or you're stepping on their turf. Then you've got carnivores, they also probably don't want to kill you all the time unless they're hungry. Maybe the good cannibals could have things in their base like structures they've got to complete. Maybe they need solophyte to complete something. you got to go out and mine it for them and bring it back. Just have a quest system. That could work. Even the forest had a quest system. It had things you could check off on the to-do list. All this has is find the puftons as soon as you land. That's it. Once you've done that, there's no reward for it. And as per usual, if they're going to do an RPG system with quests and such, just make it not compulsory. And Knight likes their freedom, they can still keep it. Now, the last possible solution that I can think of, and which is why I think they may have made the map as big as it is, is possibly the use of AI. AI is just thrown around so much that I don't even know what can be done with it and what can't. But it's quite possible that they're developing AI tools to fill out the map automatically. But it's quite possible that they could add POIs, random events, random encounters, and all that sort of stuff with the use of AI. But I'm not sure I could be talking out my ass here. I think they really need to add more people working on the map and filling it out or using AI to fill it out. Because I think this problem is actually hurting the game quite a lot. I do hope they come up with a solution. Now, one of my solutions to the map being so big has just been building zip lines around the map. It's actually very enjoyable making a highway around the game, but honestly, it's one of the only things I find very enjoyable about the game. Because I'm making a highway, I'm making something practical that can be used. I struggle to make things decorative because I feel like they don't have much of a use. Why my castle's taking so long to make my season two playthrough because it is such a drag and it's not very practical. It's too big too. But I want to hear what solutions other people have. So leave your thoughts in the comments what you think. I could be wrong. But yeah, hopefully you found this video useful. And hopefully Endnight does too. And if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.